old buddy, old buddy. Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. $3,000 worth of the biggest, baddest cordless impact wrenches on the planet hit an all new dyno with everything they can muster today on a very special TTC episode. This is the all new Ingersoll Rand W9691 extended anvil, a $1,500 29-pound bear, 3,000-foot-pound nut-busting tank of an impact wrench. Recently, we purchased the Milwaukee 2,000-foot-pound rated 2868-1-inch D-handle, and it nearly killed off this channel's only torque dyno. Despite the licking she took, we put out a request for anyone with access to the new, bigger, batter, according to IR, W9691, and promised we would come up with something to handle it. Our good friend Rob over at Cop Tool of Belt and Boxes fame said he knew just the guy, Jay over at Ohio Power Tool. So that's who we have to thank today for letting us borrow this big boy. Wait, does that mean TTC has gone all corporate? Cashing in those big checks now? Well, the beauty of Ohio Power Tool is they're a retailer that sells both this guy and this new guy on the same website. So no dog in the fight here. If you need copious beans, they'd be happy to help you out with either of the links below. No sponsorship here, just real big bros helping out a relatively new channel who spent all their money on our Big Red D. This all new IR cordless behemoth is of course the extended anvil model, and the Milwaukee is not, but as we found in episode 52, an extended anvil alone doesn't seem to reduce power, which makes sense as the specs seem to always be the same between models. Another thing a bit different on the Ingersoll Rand is it's rocking two of these 20 volt 5 amp hour batteries to sort of total 10 amp hours together as they don't appear to work independently. In Milwaukee's case, it's using our newly purchased HD 12.0 single battery source for overall more capacity, while also using 21700 cells, whereas the IR is just chock full of those traditional 18650s. Normally that wouldn't be the end all be all, but these tools do use a lot of current, and when we tested the IR half inch high torque, which is truly a beast out of the hole, we did see its progress flatline a bit when things got really tight, which usually indicates on cordless tools, in our experience, some inadequacy having to do with the battery, at least in most cases. Since this new 1-inch from IR uses the same batteries, we're hoping 2 does the trick this time, and IR seems to think it will, as its specs are sort of on another planet. When it comes to max torque or tightening, IR's first 1-inch cordless advertises 2,200 foot-pounds, which is 300 up from the Milwaukee at 1,900. But it's just getting started there. While the Milwaukee has a, until recently, record cordless nut-busting torque of 2,000, the 9691 is boasting 3,000. For real? Well, we'll get a chance to see how quick it can bust nuts free today compared to that Milwaukee because this $10,000 Skidmore machine we hacked up doesn't even have a reverse thread setup. So some steal of a deal that thing is. We're going to be dynoing our various test links as normal, but also doing timed dyno graphs of nut busting for the first time on the channel. As usual, our channel is 100% brought to you by you watching this video. Those of you who have bought our very cool t-shirts and even just doing so much as going down and clicking subscribe, it all makes this possible. Speaking of that dough though, our Milwaukee one inch that you paid for costs as a kit $1,299, which until this IR came out was the most expensive cordless impact we've seen. This IR, while we've already mentioned is $1,500 and it was, it's been 1520, 1560 everywhere until we made this episode, Ohio Power Tool had to go out and put it on their website for $1,399, only $100 more than the Milwaukee kit, and four batteries and a double charger. When we saw this come out, we figured it would be $1,600 minimum. Again, Ohio Power Tool did not ask us to talk about Link or show any of this. It just seems like a good deal, and we appreciate the hell out of them. I know what you're thinking, though. $1,400, a good deal. But at this level of impact torque and cordless, there isn't a whole lot of options. The upcoming 60 volt Durofix one inch doesn't appear to actually be on sale yet. Durofix did offer to send us one for free and that would have been pretty cool to do a triple head to head here. But as you may know, we don't accept anything directly from brands as we don't know for sure that we'd be getting the one you'd be buying. And we might have some bias as to not disappoint that generous brand as they are the ones making the tool and thus they have something to gain from it doing well. So these two really are the biggest, baddest cordless on the block for sale today. And if this IR is absolute trash, we'll be happy to show that as well. As a matter of fact, out the box, the left charging bank for the dual charger has been giving us nothing but issues. It seems like if two are charging, this one will always appear to error out on the left and stop. And we tried this without and with an extension cord. 
When attempting this on a mostly charged battery, we've had more success, but it's still very hit and miss. Since this tool requires two batteries to work, this would be quite annoying to put both of these on a charger overnight, then come to find only one charged and one nearly dead. That can't be great for performance. But we've done enough talking already and enough taking their word for these impressive torque specs. Let's see for ourselves. Both of these tools are going to hit the dyno, then hit the rank chart, do some nut busting, then finally test out IR's power control shutoff modes versus their torque claims as well. Our first runs are going to be to calibrate our new dyno. We know it works, but it's still just showing us hydraulic PSI or pressure. So here's the Milwaukee's first five second run, which on our dyno made 858 median, 867 average. Let's see what she's making on the Skidmore Model K in PSI. So 1130 PSI, that's not bolt tension pounds, that's just hydraulic pressure. By using a little math, we can figure out the torque coefficient here and normalize this data to the rest of the data we show on this channel. It's worth pointing out that the gauge display didn't really enjoy the one inch impacts today. We normally have a dyno clamped to a vise, then attached to 1000 pounds worth of table. Despite Velcro pads on the back of this gauge, it sort of just shimmied around too much. And this Skidmore also sort of just skids around. So while we're able to get the data out of it for chart making, during these runs, it's not gonna be super useful to follow along by looking at the gauge. So here's another five second run. This is the new median run of three for the M18 2868-20. Okay, so looking good, 890, a little bit up from the median of its last dyno session. Compared to our usual dyno, maybe it's the amount of hydraulic oil in this one or bolt size, but we're seeing on the test day 30, 40, 50 foot-pounds plus or minus between runs, though it could be the tools themselves. 40 foot-pounds on these is like a quarter second for these bad boys. Hold on tight though, because things are going to get pretty wild coming up. Now let's see some new testing. As you may know, this girl punished our rig quite a bit, which we assumed might happen one day. Even our bow alloy bolts that exceed grade 9 have their limits. Our next step is to see if those limits influenced our numbers on long, higher power torque runs. As we often mention, we like to verify results on this channel. And until now, that's something we've been unable to do on this model scores. Sometimes it can be several months of testing a handful of similar tools before we show you the first episode. That way we don't discourage you from buying a tool using bunk data. But on this one inch, we didn't know if we would ever get the chance to verify results until now. Here's our Milwaukee D handle on a 10 second run, which we'll use to compare to the IR, but we had not run until now in this forward direction. One thousand two hundred and twenty three. That's one hundred to one hundred and forty foot pounds over the 10 second run we did last time but also in a new direction versus that test. Now, before we go to our third BCS test and nut busting, we'd like to finally dive into that all new IR cordless. 2,200 foot pounds versus 1,900 foot pounds of the M18. Let's see it. Here's the first test in working torque up against the Milwaukee. Eleven hundred and six, four four digits on its first five second test. Things already looking pretty spicy on this newer, slightly more pricey model. The M18 comes out the gate a little bit quicker, but once things are tightened up, the IR so far building quite a gap. Let's see if that relationship holds true in our next test to match the 10 second run we did with the Milwaukee, which saw an already very impressive 1223. The hard hits of the IR really delay the display on the readouts for this one, so keep your eyes on the graph. Fourteen hundred and twenty-nine. The low-range dynamic torque force per blow of this thing is just crazy. I'm betting its nut busting really is going to be a standout. The M18 is still coming out the gate quicker, but you may have noticed that the RPM difference between these two tools when we showed it: twelve hundred for the M18 versus eight hundred and ninety for the IR. Well, the M18 has higher impacts per minute too, and we think that's causing things to get snugged up quicker. 
Then the IR, when both of them are decently tight, its force per blow is really making these gains. All right, time for the big numbers. If they haven't run out of breath already, our 15 second test is called best case scenario. Time to see what the Milwaukee can do and if our poor bolts on our regular dyno were just giving up the ghost. Here's its best run. Fourteen oh six. All right, that's what I'm talking about. The best we managed last time on our dyno was twelve thirty two. Theoretically, our bow alloy bolts should be good past that, but impact force is always a bit different than gradual linear torque. We find. I'm glad we could vindicate this impact. We'll go back and test the one inch pistol and Makita XGT three quarter inch as well while we have this good more just to make sure things don't change. But that M 18s time on the throne may be short lived because it's time for the Ingersoll rant. Here's its best run. One thousand seven hundred and forty eight. That's it, guys. We've peaked. It's downhill from here. <laughs> I think we could pack it in less than a year in testing these tools. And here we are. Where do we even go from here? Unless you happen to have a Pioli pick gun and you want to loan that to us and we can connect that to a huge nitrogen tank, hit us up. Seventeen hundred forty eight is one thousand foot pounds above an M18 high torque. Let's head over to the rank chart to see how these numbers shake up things before we do some gratuitous work safe nut busting. Their power runs are recorded here with some updates for the Milwaukee, mainly because its last two tests it was pretty much guilty of attempted homicide on our main dyno. That makes for some spicy points, 89, 122, 141 for the M18, and 110, 143, and 175 for the IR. For length, we're using the standard anvil length IR here since it shouldn't get penalized just for us having to give a long anvil a go rather than a short, and thus making the same beans at the end of the day anyways. That's 78.6 and 87. High score, but not really touching that Makita. I don't think anything will for its size. The IR advertises higher tightening torque, which is what we've done so far, but also made more tightening torque. That's 74% and 80% for their claims we saw today based on the old school impact we use for this baseline, which also happens to be in Ingersoll Rand. While their kits are pretty close in price, which seems like the way to go for these tools, the lowest you can find a bare IR right now for is 1065, so that makes for 26.4 and 24.6 points, totaling 531 and 619.6, putting these two quite firmly into first and second where you might expect, bumping down that Makita, which probably should be on a three quarter inch drive only list, but does sort of play with the big dogs here. The IR completely ruining our theoretical max score as well. Yeah, that's because it didn't exist when we came up with this chart. Makes me wish our 80 gallon IR compressor with one inch cast iron lines could even feed a one inch air gun adequately enough to compare these apples to apples air to cordless. But let's not forget this cordless bully is claiming 3000 foot pounds nut busting versus the practically minuscule 2,000 foot-pounds of the Milwaukee. Let's see some nut busting, which will be showing on a sort of reverse chart graphic and also timed. Since this Skidmore doesn't have a reverse thread, this is our best bet to see some counterclockwise action. If you're wondering why we don't traditionally test nut busting or breakaway, it's because there's no accepted standard for testing it like there is for the going on 50 year standard of working in max torque using bolt tension like we do. Nut busting is a modern invention to show more flashy numbers and everyone does it differently after talking to several brands and sources. Stanley Black & Decker, so DeWalt and others, uses short rods against a static object with a digital strain gauge of sorts to measure peaks and impact force and a formula spits out a number from that. Hikoki and Metabo HPT use grade 8 M24 thread bolts. Many Taiwan manufacturers use a custom bolt wide flange nut and oiled hardened plate setup for 15 seconds that doesn't really resemble anything you'd see in real life. And Capri does this for 30 seconds, although I don't think in 30 minutes their small half inch we tested would hit that 1715 number they put on it. It's all a bit fairy tale land for us, but 
If you can test them all the same way, like Shop Tool Reviews does a good job of, you may not be replicating how they get their numbers, so not something we'd want to score them against, but you can show how they compare to each other, which is all we've ever aimed for. Up first, loosening near 1,100 foot-pounds is the M18. So 6.2 seconds. Now for the IR, starting a little closer to 1100. We are, after all, just removing the nuts each one of these tightens, so that's sort of our limitation here. Let's see it. Four point four seconds this time, and a steeper curve for it. Now let's see the M18 remove fourteen hundred and fifty, just a little bit more torque than it was able to make in tightening today. Eleven point nine seconds, still taking a while to do so, but less than the 15 second run it took to make that amount of torque. Loosening is always going to be easier, of course. Now for the IR at similar torque levels. Six point one six six seconds, with a much steeper curve down to loose, taking still less time to remove than the M18 did to remove that 1100 foot pound run. Last up for you, we're showing a head-to-head -head versus the tightest the IR could tighten this rig, both of them having a go at taking it off. That's 1,720 foot-pounds, with the M18 being rated for 2,000, this shouldn't be too difficult, and the IR at 3,000 should be a piece of cake. Here's both on screen. That's 9.92 versus 13.36 seconds. The M18 being able to take off really anything the IR can tighten, but yeah, the IR just being able to do it a lot better, a lot quicker. Although yeah, this action here, it's not exactly pleasant. Using both of these tools all day is not something you would look forward to doing, but surely it can't be much worse than a one inch air gun. Yeah, these are sort of tools you have to use because you need to use them. Because they are such beasts, IR designed power control modes for snugging up or tightening bolts without over tightening them. Low is supposed to be 180 foot pounds and medium is supposed to be 400. So let's see that. Can this thing even throttle back to 180? Here's mode two or medium. Three hundred and sixty of their stated four hundred. Very nice. The idea is not to over torque after all, so it seems to be doing the job. And here's mode one aiming for one hundred and eighty. One hundred and thirty foot pounds, that's a lot closer than the other much smaller and easier to control guns have been able to deliver in our experience. Both tools were very impressive today, we think, the M18 besting its previous scores, and we already felt that that was quite a high-value tool compared to some other M18 tools, so the extra power is just icing on the cake. But the Ingersoll ran for just $100 to $200 more as a kit. Its batteries didn't hold it back today. Those saddlebag 5 amp hour packs rode this pony to the top of the rank charts, and bested even our Big D with all of its nut busting, although you might have to be charging one battery at a time to do so. Thanks for joining us on this heavy hitting episode. Click some stuff below to keep things moving. And thank you, as always, for watching.